Today we're going to talk about recovery. Now, I don't know about you, but I prefer training hard and training often. But what I know is that you can only train as hard as you can recover. Now, one of the best tools for recovery, in my opinion, is sleep. So, when it comes to sleep, the daily recommended allowance for sleep is between seven or eight hours. Realistically, if you're going to bed at 11, getting up at six, you are in bed for seven hours, but you're probably getting closer to five and a half or six hours in total. So we wanna focus on quality of sleep as well as quantity of sleep. When it comes to getting a good night's sleep, you need to look at your bedtime routine. What are you doing before bed to get you into that nighttime routine type thing? Well, oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. No, in all seriousness, a nighttime routine has become an essential part of my day. Just for the same reasons that Ella said, we want to set ourselves up for deep restorative sleep. And if we're doing things that stimulate us on the lead up to bed, you might still be in bed for eight hours, but the chances of you actually getting deep sleep for those eight, those eight hours are cut down drastically. So my wind down routine always incorporate something that's going to help me de-stimulate mentally and I do like to try and reduce blue lights and screens as well. So I will always try and put my phone to one side by 8pm. If I know I'm going to be getting into bed at 9, firstly it helps me switch off from the day so social media, work, I can put that to rest for the day at about 8pm. I won't be affected by the blue lights from the screens and it's going to help me settle into getting into bed, getting a nice restful night's sleep. As well as reducing our blue light intake before bed, we want to think about having a cool bedroom. So if you've got a fan, if you've got a window, pop it open, pop it on, keep your core body temperature nice and cool. Uh, and then you can also make sure you don't eat too late. The later you eat, the higher your heart rate's gonna be. So you want to bring that down so you can again get that really nice deep sleep. With that being said, nutrition is one of our one percenter tools. So just as you would fuel for a workout, we can also refuel from our workouts to make sure that we're getting the most out of our recovery. One thing that I have learned and had to learn the hard way is not eating too close to training. So when you do finish training, there is a little window that you want to allow your body to, to cool off and calm down so that when you do eat that meal, your body can then absorb it properly and you can gain the nutrition from that fuel. Have you got any other tips that you would give to someone about nutrition around post-workout. Post-workout, we're thinking about getting a nice bit of protein in. You want a couple of carbs as well, make it nice and easily digestible. Wicked. With that being said, I did talk about being stimulated after a workout, and that is one of the, the one percenters that I live by now, and it's being able to stimulate and de-stimulate your nervous system throughout the day. So, as part of our nervous system, we do have these two branches. The sympathetic, which is commonly related to our fight or flight, so our stress hormones, our activity, our focus, our alertness. And we've also got the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest, the de-stimulated. And that side, we want to spend more time there throughout the day. So we've all felt it before when we've hammered a cup of coffee or we've been stressed or we've worked out too hard, we feel quite revved up and alert mm. and sometimes frantic Tricky. and we get that almost like anxiety feeling. So being able to turn that on and off is actually a recovery tool. So we want to spend longer in our parasympathetic side. So when we're doing that, we're thinking about breathing. And one of the breathing practices that I use to de-stimulate is simply exhaling for longer. So specifically six seconds. So you've done a lot of singing, you've done a lot of diaphragm yes. control. Ella's mm -hmm. a very good singer. So when we're talking about using the diaphragm, we want to breathe deep. So not deep as in like a gasp. We want to breathe deep to the diaphragm. You like want to you fill your belly with air as opposed to filling your chest with air. So that way you're going to expand your diaphragm and you're going to fill your lungs as much as you possibly can. It's way better than just trying to heave a load of breath into your chest. So we want to fill the diaphragm with air, and when we release that air, we want to aim for six seconds or longer, because that stimulates a nerve in our brain that then triggers the parasympathetic nervous system. And that means that we can spend more of our day de-stimulated, and that'll add to a quicker recovery. Science. And the last part we wanted to talk about was active recovery. Now, we had a conversation about this earlier, mm -hmm. and there's conflict in views because what's your active recovery might not necessarily be active, recovery, active recovery for me. Mm -hmm. You're very fit, I'm moderately <laughs> fit, so if Ella does something that's active recovery, 
that might actually be a highly stimulating workout for me. So what would you think about with active recovery? What tips would you give someone if they were going to try and do it? I think active recovery is a really important part of your training regime. So if you're spending all of your training days in the gym, get outside for your active recovery, get on a bike, go for a walk. That way you can control the effort you put in. You can go for a pretty intense walk if you want to, if that's active recovery for you, or you can take the dog out, go for a leisurely walk, chat with your mates. It's really variable, as Jack said, per person, but my recommendation would be to get outside of the gym. And the whole idea around it is that we want to move blood around our muscles. Now, Ella was telling me about a little trick that she has. If you have a really tough workout, and you, you, one of those workouts where you know, you just know that my legs are gonna be killing me tomorrow. Mm. Ella's got this little trick that she uses to flush blood out, so like, share that with her. So what you're gonna do is grab a piece of cardio kit, preferably a rower or an assault bike, something that moves lots of your main muscle groups. You're gonna sit on there for 10 minutes, really easy pace, but you're gonna flush your muscles out. So you're gonna flush that fresh blood into your muscles, getting rid of that lactic, and you can hopefully avoid majority of your DOMS the next day. So, active recovery. It needs to be active recovery on your terms. So when we're talking about recovery, we've established that sleep is top priority. And as Ella shared with us, a nighttime routine is gonna serve you very well. What were the key points? So no blue lights before bed, keep your bedroom nice and cool and don't eat too late. And if we are eating, we want to make sure that close to our workout, we're eating easy to digest foods, which are protein and carbohydrate rich, because that's going to add to our recovery. And we can also practice guided breathing and meditation like practices to de-stimulate and de-stimulating for longer periods of the day again is going to add to our recovery and lastly if you feel you do want to move get outside if you found the tips in this video useful please like share and subscribe and by all means leave us a comment if you've got your own recovery practices that you think anyone else would benefit from and you can also find us over on instagram facebook you're here on YouTube already, we're everywhere, so give us a like, give us a follow, and we will see you soon.